The C-Class was a group of light-armoured cruisers built for the Royal Navy immediately before and during World War I. The British had started their programme of this new cruiser type with the Town Class of 1910. The light-armoured cruiser effectively took the principles of the protected cruiser when it came to overall size, speed and gun calibre, but matched them to the armoured cruiser principles of having belt armour, as well as carrying a couple of larger guns along with a more numerous, smaller broadside battery. They would then go on with the town class to have a number of subclasses that had a radically different main battery types. They'd followed this with the Arethusa class, which was a smaller type of ship that was part scout cruiser and primarily intended to lead destroyer flotillas. This would then be succeeded by the Sea class, which was something of a halfway between the Arethusas and the towns, and like the towns, there would be a significant number of subclasses. A total of 28 ships were built each one displacing around 4,200 tonnes at normal load and just under 5,000 tonnes fully loaded, with 40,000 shaft horsepower driving two shafts and an armour belt which was three inches thick at the thickest point and deck armour that came in at about an inch. That was about as far as commonality between the subclasses went. Due to differences in machinery as technology advanced, the speed of a ship within the C-Class could vary from 28.5 knots in earlier vessels to just under 30 knots in later units, with the earliest models having three funnels and later units only having two. Armament was even more varied. The initial run, which would become known as the Caroline subclass, closely followed the earlier Town subclasses, which in turn had imitated the older armoured cruisers, having a couple of big guns and a collection of lesser guns in a mixed main battery. On the old large armoured cruisers, this had been 9.2-inch weapons, with 6-inch and later 7.5-inch guns backing them up. On the new light armoured cruisers, this would be made up of 6-inch and 4-inch guns, respectively. Thus, the Carolines would carry two single 6-inch guns superfiring aft on the centre line, along with eight 4-inch guns, six in single wing, wing mountings, and two single mounts forward next to each other, a single 57mm and two twin torpedo launchers completed the weapon's loadout. This was designed to allow the Carolines to hunt destroyers with their pr forward weapons, and to take on attacking enemy cruisers that might well be larger than it if they had to run away. The armament would subsequently be modified, as would the ship's mission role, through the Calliope, Cambrian, Centaur, Caledon, Ceres and Carlisle subclasses, with a total of 28 ships being built, with the final version having five single 6-inch guns, with two forward, two aft and one amidships, two single 3-inch anti-aircraft guns, and a couple of 2-pounder or 40mm anti-aircraft guns, a machine gun, and four twin torpedo tubes, two per side. And that's just as each class was built with a variety of 40mm, 47mm and 3-inch guns being added to various ships' anti-aircraft defence, along with additional torpedo tubes and the complete or partial replacement of 4-inch guns with 6-inch weapons being common features across the entirety of all the subclasses. As they'd been built throughout World War I, a number of the earlier ships were present at the Battle of Jutland, and numerous vessels of the class took part in many smaller and some of the larger actions over the course of the war, with all of them surviving, despite HMS Centaur deciding to become something of a ship of Theseus by blowing off both its bow and stern by hitting mines in 1917 and having to be largely rebuilt. As the Royal Navy's latest light cruisers by the end of World War I, since the D-Class were only just coming into service, HMS Cardiff would lead the High Seas Fleet into internment, and would then, along with others of the class, be sent out to help the Estonians in the Baltic, where the first of the class would be lost. This would be HMS Cassandra, which hit a mine, whilst the Curaçao would run into a similar issue, but would manage to survive. 
But whilst they would leave World War I as the latest and greatest cruisers in the Royal Navy's fleet, by the time the 1930s rolled around, they were now at the complete other end of the spectrum, being the smallest and weakest vessels left in the Royal Navy's cruiser fleet. As such, many of the earlier ships were either redesignated to training ships or simply scrapped. This left the Caledon, Ceres and Carlisle subclasses available for active service, with plans made to turn all 13 of these vessels into dedicated anti-aircraft vessels. This involved stripping all the existing weapons and fire control systems away and replacing them with more anti-aircraft oriented equipment. Coventry and Curlew would be the prototypes, being given 10 single 4-inch anti-aircraft guns, plus a couple of Octubal 40mm pom-poms, at least at first, as one of the pom-poms would be removed from each ship a few years later for use on other vessels, with a quad 50 calibre machine gun mount installed in its place. Curaçao, Cairo, Carlisle and Calcutta would have a more advanced fit based on the lessons from the first two it being fitted with four twin 4-inch mounts plus a single quad 40mm pom-pom, but war intervened before any more work could be done, leaving Cape Town, Colombo, Cardiff, Ceres, Caledon, Calypso and Caradoc with their original 6-inch batteries, although Colombo and Caledon would get their anti-aircraft refits in the middle of the war in 1942 and 1943, with all ships acquiring the normal accretion of 20mm and 40mm Bofors common to Allied warships of the Second World War period during the course of the conflict. Six of the ships would be lost, three of them to air attack, two to submarines, and a Curaçao going down to a collision with the liner Queen Mary, as the class would play a very active part in the war. The remaining active survivors would then be scrapped in the late 1940s, but HMS Caroline, the first of her class and a Jutland veteran, would remain as a training ship and stay in commission until 2011, when she was decommissioned, partially refitted, and opened as a museum ship in 2016 in Belfast. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.